Okay, here this Oli Richard Polyglot. Let's see about him. What is his channel here? Look. I can help you learn a new language quickly through the power of story so you can become fluent faster and live your best life. Become fluent faster and live your best life. Okay. So let's see his channel here, his videos here. Multilingual video, Oli Richard. Hi, this is Oli, um, and we're sitting here in a, a beautiful park in London on a rare summer's day. And I just thought that I would uh, record a very quick uh, video of me speaking a few different languages. Uh, it seems that there are quite a lot of people on the internet who have recorded these videos, and people seem to quite like them. So uh, I thought I'd, I'd give it a go, see, see if, I'm, uh, if I'm up to it or not. Bom, eu vou começar com português, porque português é a língua que provavelmente é mais, é, mais importante para mim. Eu, na verdade, comecei a aprender português em Londres porque tinha vários amigos é, brasileiros aqui. Se você é, é português, você vai, você vai perceber que meu, meu sotaque é, é brasileiro, não é português. Aí eu comecei a tocar música com aqueles amigos brasileiros, porque eu sou, eu sou músico e eu gosto muito da música brasileira. E também fui viajar bastante no Brasil. Eu fui passar vários... Bom, o verão várias vezes, também o Réveillon. E foi tudo ótimo. É, todo mundo que já foi para o Brasil sabe que é um país incrível. E a... Uh, Ans, environ deux ans, je me suis allé à Paris. Euh, je, je ok, il speak portugais pour one, one minute or something, now French. Et six mois là, et, et en fait, en ce moment-là, je, je parlais vraiment bien le français. J'étudiais tous les jours, j'avais des amis. C est, c est, euh, après être rentré à Londres, euh, un peu plus, pour reprendre le, le niveau que j'avais avant, on, on verra si ça marche ou pas. C'est un idioma que j'ai usé bastante dans les, les últimos años. Eh, comme le portugais, je l'ai appris aussi quand j'étais vivant à Londres. Et j'avais plusieurs amis eh, espagnols. Eh, de hecho, mon meilleur ami est eh, espagnol de las Canarias, las Islas Canarias. Nous sommes toujours tocando por ahí en eh, Londres et nous sommes à Brasil aussi. En un idioma que yo manejaba bastante Koi, Tayu, Ano, Tobato, Kaban, Ano, Zen, Mada, Pera Pera, Tu, Levere, Ni, Maniawa, Nain, Des, Kedo. Ok, all the polyglots, same like this, just four or five language. Look, I talk a bit in four language, French, Portuguese, Spanish, and Japanese. Four language in four minutes and just few words how I learn language and the five keys to learn or to language learning just how to learn and blah 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 okay let's let's see this video in Portuguese trabalho e fazer o um negócio usando a língua, sem fazer isso, você nunca vai ter aquele feedback da outra pessoa. E então não vai nunca perceber seus mesmos errores. Sem erro, sem erro, sem erro não tem como aprender de aquele erro. Entendeu? Look, you keep looking down on a table like there's some paper there I think you have some paper or book he's reading from on the table se eu nunca fizesse erro eu nunca teria porque mudar ou porque melhorar 
Então é preciso usar a língua e, como te erro, saber e reconhecer aquele erro e depois melhorar. O mundo precisa ter a motivação de, 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 de continuar, de não parar. De talvez, depois de seis meses, um ano, na hora de ter... Na hora de, de, ter, de ter parar, de ter deixar os estudos, de, de falar, não, eu não vou parar, eu vou continuar. Porque eu, porque, porque eu tenho um objetivo. Eu tenho onde eu quero chegar e eu vou chegar lá. E isso aí é a motivação, é a primeira condição, condição é para aprender uma língua. Com gente, com pessoas que falam aquela língua que se está estudando, mas ao final da esperar que alguém te ensina a língua. Você pode ir na escola, você pode contar com o professor, mas... Basicamente, se você não... O que você precisa para essa, essa aprendizagem? Uma quarta coisa... Look his eyes. Look his eyes where he's looking. He's looking down. His eyes always looking down. I think he have some book or some paper he write down. I think he write down some words or text that he is going to say. Like he is reading some text he wrote down. A quarta condição necessária para aprender uma língua é tempo. Tem muita gente que diz assim, ah, você pode aprender em 10 dias, ou um mês, ou três meses. Bom. Look, he looked down again. Every time he will look down to see the next lines. Depende de muitas coisas. Depende o que você tenha estudado antes, depende a língua que se está estudando, o espanhol ou o francês, se você já fala português, por exemplo, o espanhol ou o francês vai ser muito mais fácil. Agora, se você for estudar uh, o chinês, o japonês, tem tão pouco parecido aqueles mesmos verbos ou adjetivos em japonês tem que aprender não, não tem nada a ver com aquelas palavras é, portuguesas que você fez agora aqueles mesmos verbos ou adjetivos em japonês tem que aprender não, não tem nada a ver com aquelas palavras é, portuguesas que você conhece então tem que aprender de... sim he looked down he looked down for few seconds Look there, he looked down. He looked down, there's some text, there's some paper or something on the table where he read some text when he forget, then he looked there to read the next. He just memorized some stuff. He memorized what he's going to say in the video and then every time he forget, he will look at the text. He just memorized something he will say. Every time he forget, he will look down on the text. Let's see the one in Spanish also. Eh, bueno, hola a todos. Eh, yo soy Oli de I will teach you a language dot com. Y bueno, después de un cierto momento me dije, bueno, ya ya estoy manejando manejando el francés bastante bien. Y look, he looked down. Every time he looked down, I think he has some book or something he look at. Quiero empezar a hacer otra cosa. Y, bueno, el, el... Look, he looked down. Every few seconds he looked down. I think there's some text he's reading from. He, he wrote down what he's going to say in the video. They always practice before they make the video. They practice what they're going to say. And they write down some stuff. When they forget what they're going to say, then they will look at the text. Español siempre me interesaba y me puse a aprender. Me quedé en, en, en París solamente unos... And he keep, he keep looking up because he's trying to remember what, what's the next. 
Like when he look up, he's trying to remember, and when he cannot remember, he look down on the text. Dos meses más y después de eso eh, regresé a Londres y creo que fue a ese momento que cuando llegué en Londres que eh, me puse a, a estudiar un poco más seriamente y me acuerdo que la, la primera cosa que hice me fui a comprar un libro de estudio. And now when he forget, then he look down. Then he look down to read the text. When he cannot remember, then he look down to read the text. Eh, de la colección que se llama Teach Yourself. Look, he look on the text. He have some textbook or something he wrote down. Then he look down to read it. Es un, una colección bastante buena que cosas eh, haciéndolo. Look, he look down again. No fácilmente todo la gramática que necesitas y varias palabras, bueno, lo, 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 lo típico. Y creo que... Look, he looked down. Eh, lo hice todo, desde el principio hasta el final. Again, he's looking down now. He has some textbook there, he looked down on it. Viendo las cosas, eh, haciendo los ejercicios que hay. Y... It's all scripted, it's all scripted. They practice what they will say. They practice what they will say, then they will look down to read the text. It's all scripted and they just memorize what they want to say in the video. And then same time, they have some textbook or something they look at sometimes. Okay, let's see this Japanese. Hi guys, this is Oli from IWillTeachYourLanguage.com and today I'm going to be talking about Japanese. Uh, it's a fantastic language. Those five things are number one, uh, kanji, Chinese characters. Number two, government's official list. But in reality, there are more. Uh, these are just kanji's not just limited to that that one character itself. When you combine, so what you have in English, for example, you're going to get laughed out of the their social status. Um, but it's very real, and um, and you need to get good at these. Okay, he's speaking English the whole video. So that's not to do with causality. What's, what's this or? No Japanese, only some advice. Other advice video, speaking Cantonese progress after one month. And then here in the next video, how I learn Cantonese. I will teach you a language.com. Um, SI course is the stuff. It's as simple as that. And obviously, in the early stages, it's a pretty painstaking process. But it's all part of the learning curve. Using these, what I do is I it works. That's what I've done um, in the space of. Okay, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. In, he speak in English and tell us how he learned Cantonese. In 10 minutes he will tell us how he learned Cantonese and then he will speak Cantonese for one half minute or one minute. Hello, Daigaho, Wahai Oli. Wahai Ingoya. Yigan Ho, Hokto, Mongdonga, Yako Yu. Go Senke Do. Wato, Wato Sik. Thank 我可以聽
誒、嗯、最緊要係我誒、呃、繼續學廣東話誒日日。好啦，系咁啦，拜拜。Okay, one one half minute. He will tell us in ten half minute how he learned the language, how he learned the ling language. He will tell us in ten minute, but the language he will speak it for one half minute. Let's see what else here on his channel. Polyglot Seven Language website. Beginner, how to learn a language. A solution for beginner. Blah blah. Cantonese two months progress. Why there's always some background noise? Every time he make a video, there's some background noise. All his videos, there's some noisy, some noisy background noise, so the voice is not clear. Two months progress. How to make progress? Cantonese three months update. Hey guys, this is Ollie here from I will teach you a language. This is again this background noise. Why there's always some background noise? This is my Cantonese three month update video. But as you'll see, I'm not speaking Cantonese. I'm speaking English, and there's a reason for this. I've had a pretty tough month. But I've learned some lessons, and I want to share these lessons with you today. Now, for those of you that have been following my, find other methods of, of studying. I was just here they are. Number one, it's so important that we enjoy the process. I've been studying before, slowly started to consolidate. Okay, speaking English in this video, not Cantonese. And then he has some videos where he's just singing for two minutes in Cantonese or singing two three minutes in Portuguese. Then some Japanese learning tips, how to learn Mandarin Chinese, how to learn Brazilian Portuguese Portuguese. Speaking Cantonese after six months. How do you maintain multiple language? Time hacking, language learning.
white guy speaking Cantonese after one year in only two minutes learn Egyptian Arabic day one Assalamu alaikum Isaac it's me Oli and I'm in Ingiltida and I'm not going to Arabic but it's not Arabic for the Saida Ma Salama okay wow four things Okay, but let's see this one. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the first thing I did when I started learning Arabic following uh, Benny's Speak in a Week course is I went to the Omniglot website, which is a fantastic resource. And I simply went through this list of phrases. It's just like a phrase book. If you have a phrase book, you would use this to gather some some vocabulary about myself, some words that I'm going to use a lot. I've made a start here, um, and these are just words that off the top of my head. Music, manager, that's my job. Um, some verbs, to travel, to learn. Here we go, language. Obviously an important one for me. Uh, to live. Japan, I used to live in Japan, Cairo. And where am I getting these from? Well... There's this great little Arabic dictionary called Lisan, Lisan Masri. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And all I'm doing is I'm going to the search and I'm looking for words. So, um, verb to write, I do a lot of that. So I'm finding it here. Uh, okay, it's only got that in MS, which is modern standard. But that'll do for now. And I'm just literally copying and pasting it in to this little Google Doc. So these little words that I've got here are just going to form the basis of my vocabulary in Arabic. And when I have my first conversation with a native speaker in a few days, these are the words that I'm going to start to try to use to talk about myself carry it around with me. When I open up my flashcard app next time, it's going to have all of these here ready in double-sided flashcards for me to study wherever I want. And so this is really where it all starts. Our personal and... Speaking English, this video, just some interview. Okay, second grade kid speaks five language. 
in three minutes. Eight study hacks, English guy speaking Egyptian Arabic after six months. Okay, speak Egyptian Arabic in two minutes. Olis and his teacher discussed the lesson and study techniques. Okay, so I'm really, really happy to be joined by someone very special today. And this is Mona. And Mona is the person who's been teaching me Arabic for the last, how many months? Have we been, we've been working together three or four months or so? I think so, yes. Something like that, yeah. Now, usually usually in these videos, what I, I do... I often talk myself about how I think I, I learn and what I've been doing, and basically me, 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 me. But I want to turn turn it around a little bit today and do something a little bit different, because, I, you know, I go to Mona for my Arabic lessons, and I have all these things going on in my head, but Mona is the person who actually sees it from the other side of the table, and she sees you know, what I'm doing and the kind of things that I'm doing in the lessons and the way that I study from a complete... improvement was really um, quick. Like, it didn't take you the long time that I usually spent with my other students um, to be able to speak in, in that level. So I think I told you that um, you amazingly improved. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you. And, uh, you know, we're not, we're, sure. I, I didn't want. Okay, he's faster than the other students. But how do we know if they're telling the truth? Maybe he studied for longer time. Maybe he will say, oh, I study for three months or six months. But maybe he has been studying for one year or two years. We don't know. How can we know if it's true? It's like, okay, he's much faster than everyone else, really. I wanted to say that in order to gloat or to boast or anything like that, because I want to look behind that and figure out, well, if this is the case, if I've managed to improve in, and we're talking about Egyptian Arabic here that I'm learning, and if I've managed to improve faster than might be typical, I want to look at why that is. So... Let's dive in. I've, I've, I've prepared a bunch of questions that I'm going to ask Mona, but I mean, I'm all, I've also told her that I'd like her to just um, be very open and, and honest and, and say the kind of things that, that come into her mind. So we're going to let this conversation go off in unknown directions. So, Mona, let's start off by talking about what kind of time frame are we talking about? Then? And so in this, this, this impression that you've got of me improving quickly, over what period of time are we, are we talking about? Well, at least six months but um like to be able to to have basic conversations and stuff like that and you would get into a pre-intermediate intermediate level kind of thing but the sentences and the structure that you say it's definitely more than that and in a shorter time so what i really really noticed that it took you short time shorter than um than my other students to to accomplish that and to get into that level where you're able to speak and express the parts that you don't know um still in arabic so you don't have your poses are definitely less okay so are you talking about paraphrasing Exactly, exactly. So if you, for example, if you um, did not know a specific sentence or you didn't know how to express a specific word, you basically use other Arabic words to express this and I understand and then I tell you the word that you mean. So you don't have to use your English and stuff like that um, most of the times. So you're able to express, um, maybe not in the way that you want it because it's not the original word, but you you have a backup plan, as as we can call it. So, let's talk... You, you mentioned paraphrase. There was some editing there, I think. You mentioned the fact that I was, a, I'm, I was able to paraphrase and express myself in different ways. But why? The question... The question is why is it important for him or other polyglot YouTubers or other YouTubers, why it's important for them to show us, look here, after one month I learned this, after two months I learned this, after six months I learned how much, after one year, after two years, look how much I learned, look how fast I'm learning. Why is it important for them to show it to people? Like why? They need to show it to everyone on YouTube, look how, f or on 
the world in the world like look how fast i'm learning or look how many language i'm learning like why it's important to show it to everyone like look look at me look at me look at me look at me how many language i'm learning how fast i'm learning like why is it important like why should anyone care i see there are many people who care but why should people care like how fast can this person learn like everyone should just concentrate on the on themselves like if someone want to learn a language they should just concentrate on thinking taking time to learn the language and let it take the time that it will take if it will take half year one year two years or how long time it will take to learn a language they should just take the time it takes why should they care about how long time it takes for other people on youtube to learn the language it's it's all just a lie like they're just lying that they're learning faster than other people they pretend that they're learning faster than other people because then they want to sell some books like this they'll tell you oh if you buy my books then you can learn also faster same like me it's not true that they learn faster just they do like this so they will tell you okay you can buy my books or you can take some course like that they will sell you something to learn faster that's what it's all about they're pretending that you can learn faster like look here he will say that you can learn faster here look like become fluent faster and live your best life i will teach you a language then you will make some commercial for his website and for his books like that it's just some bullshit they they do to tell people to buy their books or buy something from them that's what it's all about it's just bullshit that's why they pretend like oh i can learn a language in one week or three weeks or one month or or they will say they can learn a language in six three months or six months they pretend that they can learn very fast even it's not true they pretend they can learn very fast so people will buy some books or some other stuff from them it's just a big big lie they are scammers scammers it's quite quickly on this that's that's the point so that i mean that makes me think i mean because from my perspective when i come around or if, if you just knew <laughs> so as i told you you already have a specific plan and something that that we i just kind of come to these lessons with you to speak but actually i have asked you a lot of okay the whole <clears throat> the whole video is just in english it's just to bra just for bragging a video just to brag a video for bragging look at me look how fast i can learn look my teacher tell me i learn faster than other people just a video to brag about how fast you can learn okay here here it says that Ollie richards it says that Ollie richards speaks eight language english french german spanish portuguese japanese arabic and cantonese and he is the founder of i will teach you a language a website that provides study hacks and mind tools for language learners okay I think first of all he's Arabic he's Arabic or his Egyptian Arabic his Egyptian Arabic is very 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 low level just very 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 beginner his Egyptian Arabic is very beginner just some very little beginner stuff and then of course he can speak english because he's from uk he can speak english because he's from uk and then his japanese and cantonese i don't know how much he can speak i think it's also beginner i think his japanese and cantonese might also be just some very beginner stuff i'm not sure and then his french german spanish and portuguese maybe he can speak a little in this 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 four language 
maybe you can speak a little in those four language but i st think it's also beginner so he just only speak english and then the rest is just beginner or something like that they just like to brag too much all this polyglot youtuber they're bragging and make it look like they know much more than they do and it says here that he is founder of i will teach your language a web website that provides study hacks study hacks and mind tools always something like study hacks and oh, you will learn a language much faster like they make it look like they have some techniques that will make you learn a language much faster and it's not true they just do this to make money they just do this to make money from selling some books or some course or some other stuff it's just about making money how do you maintain multiple language how many times did you see this one how many times did you see those polyglot youtubers make this kind of video same kind of video we see on this language girl she has this also this kind of video and the same with Lindy Boats and some other polyglot youtubers always this kind of how do you maintain multiple language or how do you how you don't mix them up and just some bullshit all of them and here look sign up for your free email listening course blah 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 just some bullshit and then look here the Cantonese is just beginner look after one month Cantonese the Cantonese is beginner and also the Japanese and Egyptian Arabic yeah look Chinese just how to learn Chinese I think just beginner just beginner same like this Cantonese after six months beginner blah blah nonsense Cantonese after one year look why guys speak Cantonese after one year in two and a half minutes in two and a half minutes you study for one year then you will make a video for two and a half minutes and they study three four five languages the same time so maybe he only study very little that's why he it's only two and a half minutes and his Egyptian Arabic is still very 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 beginner and this one all is and his teacher discuss their lessons I already show you I already show you this one he, they just he just keep bragging and he make his teacher also brag about how much he can speak and look under under this one it says English guy speaking Egyptian Arabic after six months and it's only two minutes just bullshitting people. أنا أنا عارف ناس كتير اللي بيتعلموا العربي وهم بيعتقدوا إن ال العربي صعب جدا. بس بالنسبة لي أنا ما أعتقد إن العربي صعب أوي بالمقارنة مع اللغات التانية. لكن في في حاجة واحدة صعبة بالتأكيد و وهي القواعد القواعد العربية صعبة جدا. و هو احيانا بتجنيني <تصفيق> انا عايز اتعلم العربي عشان you have some headsets on i don't know if it's because he's talking in the mic of the headset or maybe he is listening in the headset where he listen to what he's going to say we never know if he's using the headset so to make the voice more clear in the speaker in the mic or if he's wearing the headset because he is listening to what he will say we never know and also it's just some beginner stuff or some memorized stuff it's only two minutes just some just few sentences he memorized and will say <laughs> الكلام حافز بالنسبة لي وأنا أنا عايز أنا عايز أتعلم الكلام بشكل أساسي لكن أحيانا أحيانا الحافز مشكلة 
علشان الثقافة العربية مختلفة جدا عن الثقافة دي عشان كده انا 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 مش على طول عندي الشرف للمذاكرة كل يوم بس انا بحب قوي اللغة العربية والناس المصرية كمان عشان كده انا 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 باستمرار هز هز اذاكر العربي و و وانا هحاول انا هحاول اعمل فيديو فيديو تاني في في المستقبل خلاص شكرا مع السلامه just some beginner stuff just some beginner stuff just some beginner stuff for two minutes and then in the next video this picture okay. this one will tell him that he, oh he's very good and he's learning much faster what very good and learning much faster than other people also i don't think she's a real teacher maybe she is but i don't think i think she's just a normal person that he found online maybe he found her on facebook or something or maybe he found her on some website or we never know like I think she's just a normal person. Maybe you found her on italki or Facebook or we never know. I think she is not a real teacher. She's maybe she's just a normal person, even if she's a real teacher, but he pay her money. He pay her money to teach him. And also Egyptian, they are very nice. Like they will compliment you. Like if you are some tourist or foreigner they will be nice to you and compliment you and say oh it's very good because they're happy that you're learning their language also it's scripted like they already make this video together before they make the video he will tell her what to say or he will tell her can you say something good about me it's for my youtube channel i want people to hear something good can you tell them can you tell them oh that I'm more fast to learn than other people, blah, blah, blah. It's just some made up stuff. And it's all made up. It's like they're planning it together. And look, look, look here, you have this video about Moses McGormack Lawushu. Like his inspiration, his inspiration is is Lawushu, and Lawushu was a scammer. He was selling some books from lying to people. If your inspiration is a scammer, then you are also a scammer. And then he also, I see he have videos with other people, like Luca Lampariello, and also with Steve Kaufman and maybe some other polyglot YouTubers also. So they're all part of this big polyglot communi community. So I don't really trust in anything he say. Moses McCormick spoke over 50 languages. Yes, 50. And inspired millions of... <laughs> people around the world to improve their lives by learning languages. Now, tragically, Moses passed away in early 2021. And so I thought, what better way? Really? Spoke over 50 language? Really? What kind of nonsense? And of course, another scammer here, I can. It's like all the scammers working together. I can uh, all your Richards, all the scammers working together. Just some nonsense. Zero fluent. Zero fluent. Just some bullshit nonsense. Again, a comment here from Ikena on one of 
Ollie Richards videos. Look here, another video comment from Ikena also. Look here, Ikena. All the scammers, all the scammers supporting each other. All the scammers supporting each other. Look here, comment from Ikena. All the scammers are supporting each other. All those, all those polyglot YouTubers, scammers supporting each other. One year of Turkish. I'm going to show you today's music, today's uh, soundtrack. It is question in the Fluency Mastermind Facebook group. Ollie Richards, he's doing lots of reading and listening. Now you are kind of thinking key stuff. And then for that reason, it's really important. Right now, you've got a year's worth of key. And this is a question here. Regarding, um, I'll be honest, not in the, in the immediate future. We've just released books in Swedish. It says, I completely agree that breaks and even longer breaks can be ridiculously beneficial. Indeed, ridiculous. I quite agree. Ridiculously beneficial. Um, he or she also says the fact that you're doing them in Icelandic at all is incredible. Uh, most One year of Turkish and speaking in English. Not very nice stuff, but if you're interested in that, you can follow along. That's, uh, you may might not agree, but I think that the the um the covers one year of turkish and he's speaking in english the whole video one year of turkish learning and he's speaking in english the whole video special event for language bloggers youtubers hey guys this is ollis and this is jean How's it going? Now, slightly different video today. We're not talking prim primarily about language learning. Rather, we are going to talk to you specifically if you work with languages online in some way or another. So if you have a big YouTube channel related to language learning or if you're an Instagrammer, podcaster, blogger, language entrepreneur, if you have an app, if you have an app, that don't worry. Yeah. So what we are doing is organizing an event in Berlin next year the end of March next year. Mm. And this event, we are putting together for people like us, people who work with languages online. Maybe that doesn't even have to be our main job. It could just be something we do on the side. But we, the thing that unites all of us is that we do stuff with languages. We try to help and teach others using the, the knowledge and experience we've got about, uh, about languages. So, so the meeting of the scammers, inviting the other scammers for a meeting the event itself is called the Language Influencer Summit. Scammer event. The Scammer event. And it's in the end of March. In the end of March in Berlin. And uh, yeah, we invite you to come as well. Yeah, so what's the event all about? Well, it is not a teaching event. It's not an event where we or other people teach you about stuff. What we're trying to do primarily is to provide a forum for people that do the sort, of the sort of stuff that we do to come together meet talk network learn drink eat do all the things that we like to do at conferences but with a specific focus on uh, on stuff that we do on building businesses on building on attracting um, more followers on getting our message out into the world this is these are all very much tied up because as, as much as we work with and know about and teach languages you know working online it has a, a business component to it as well and that's quite tricky so we want to bring people together and provide a very cool fun weekend where we can talk about all this stuff and meet other people so if you want to be there as well check out the website language influence summit.org i'll put the scammer event the event of the scammer same like the polyglot conference all the scammer event where the scammers meet together in the description below ah, the 
most important. The scammer event where the scammers meet to make plans to scam more people and scam more money from people. Important thing in your in your um, because it is a fantastic fit between what I do and my audience, and it's great for everybody because they get exposure. Um, they I get some a little bit of sponsorship money. The people who get the message, they get sponsorship money. Sponsorship money. To know the company. This is a fantastic thing, this, the, whole, the whole world of, of affiliates. Mm -hmm. But often what you need is actually to be introduced to exactly. these people and get those opportunities. Right? You need to know the people, right? And they always have the idea that many of us, we are very good with languages. The scammers need to meet to make more scam. The scammers meet together to plan all the scams together. How to use Hello Talk app? Okay, commercial for an app. Can technology help you learn a language, Oli and Luca? Okay, Oli and Luca Lampariello. So, Luca, I don't know if you remember. A couple of uh, must have been a few months ago now. We were having a chat with a couple of a couple of other people, and the topic came up of of technology and language learning. And uh, we talked for quite some time about this. And do you remember this little story that you told me about um, one one evening when you were in Rome? And you met a bunch of people who were learning languages. Do you remember that? I do. <laughs> I remember uh, we were talking about the fact that, yeah, well, I went to a bar and then uh, a lot of people actually told me, do you know Duolingo? They were asking me if I knew Duolingo. I said, of course, I, I, I do know Duolingo, but I got to confess that I've never used it. So I was kind of surprised that everybody knows Duolingo. Um, and it looks like it's mainstream right now. So, um, but the thing that I want to add at is, and once again, I don't know Duolingo because I've never used it. Maybe, maybe I, I, I took a look, you know, a peek at it maybe once. But uh, my suggestion is always to use, you know, um, software programs. That's okay. Um, but. A lot of people, actually, uh, expert language learners, told me that they haven't learned much with Duolingo. But what is cool about that is that it gets you hooked, so like this gamified aspect to language learning. So people, it's like it's like a game. So people do it all the time. But I believe that language is about you know interacting with human beings and talking and and, and, and expressing your ideas and you know. Yeah, I angle you, you, yeah. you see this, and um, and I believe that some things are good, some other things are not good. And I just want to ask to to add that, you know, if you have to choose between second life and having a alternative life on the screen and go out and you know have a chat, well, definitely I would go for the first one. <laughs> the first difficult to be focused on the computer but when away from the computer, everything changes. I'm more relaxed, you know. I use the book. It's a different. It's and you can spend some time relaxing, you know. But I had bought Teach Yourself and then I had bought Asimov. But apart from that, when I hit the intermediate stage, so to say, so I finished the, the, the books, then I told myself, I have nothing to read or nothing to watch. A 12-year-old kid can watch porn. Can you imagine the impact it has on these people? Uh, who, the people who are also learning languages, they are realizing that. So... It's addictive, but it's you. You become part of the system. And you can't do without it, and it's very dangerous. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, that's that's really. It's been a fascinating conversation, and that's exactly why I wanted to to record this chat. Okay. Just a lot of <clears throat> a lot of talking, talking, talking.
Okay, Oli speaks Thai after 11 days in Thailand. Okay, let's see this. Hey, it's Oli, and what you're about to watch is a 20 minute video of me speaking Thai. Now, before you watch that, I wanted to give you a quick idea of exactly what the video is so I can explain the context a little bit. Um, because what this is actually a part of is, it, well, it's really the culmination of uh, a 14 day uh, trip that I took to Thailand, to Bangkok to learn Thai. And I was a complete beginner last week, actually. Um, and so what this video really is, is not designed to be entertainment. It's designed to really document my level in speaking Thai after two weeks of learning from, from scratch. Now, to really understand the context of this, um, you need to go and watch... Okay, there's a lot of time when they're, where they're not even speaking. It's like mm, 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 mm. Together, together. That's in Thai. She is the one. She's the one speaking most of the time, and sometimes they're not even saying anything. Sometimes, or what he say in, in, in speaking English? She speak to him very, very slow and very simple to make it easy for him. So much time. Marian, right? Marian. Not come to travel. Travel a little bit. Uh. But not every day. Twenty minute, just saying mm, ah, mm, ah, like they're not even talking. 
and talking very slow, few words. I talk a webcast with Richard Sincott and Oli Richards. This iTalky they really support all the scammers. iTalky really support all this scammer community. And look, they're speaking in English most of the time, then a little here maybe in Russian or something like that. Okay, here we go. We're live. We are indeed. Hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, welcome, everybody. With that, uh, Rick. Okay, we cannot see Richard Simcott just on the, the call like that. So, I think... So, what is your typical day of language usage inside and outside work? How many hours a day do you study? And then being that you know so many, do you have a schedule of what you need to study on a daily basis? Okay. So um, for me, I work as uh, the director of languages for an online uh, social media management agency called e Moderation. And so in that role, I give advice on uh, language and cultures as well attached to languages um, for online projects that work on all sorts of social media, uh, whether we're doing engagement or my um, your, your language as well. What I do is I, I um, there are some languages I almost never speak. Talking on, on the blog, um, and I, I, I really think it's... Look at him, he looks like an abnormal. Seriously, if you look at him, he looks like an abnormal. He don't, look, he don't look like someone who is very smart and know a lot of language. He looks like an abnormal person like that. Like, he looks really abnormal. And the whole video is like in English, I think, almost the whole video. It's basically, uh, I will look at what the languages I'm learning, why I'm learning it, and uh, also, um, well, it's a good question. Um, I have a daughter webinar, so mixing languages, so which has lots of videos on as well. So you can find out and find out from your italki teacher as well what kinds of things they do in the country. You know, look at italki for a language partner who wants to practice your language. So you know, maybe if, if that's an issue as well, paying for a teacher, you're you're actually paying for a language partner. I'd say that, that you know what I tend to do is is look at um so we're learning past tenses Okay, they're speaking in English the whole time or what? But I see something here, those look like Russian here. Let's see this one. Um, okay, this is in Russian and German. So you can practice your German if you want, um, uh, Oli. And I'll, I'll say it in English because obviously um, it's, it's written in, German, in, in Russian, but they've got an eight-year-old daughter who uh, only speaks Russian. And in six months' time, they're going go to go to, to live in Germany with her. Uh, and they want to know if they've got uh, an hour or two a day, what kind of things they can do to um, help them. You say it's Russian, then he's speaking in English. In German. Um, well, it's a good question. Um, definitely. And we can talk about this, um, you know, uh, away from this webinar if you want some uh, more specific advice. All right. The next question is also in Russian, so I'll uh, defer. Okay. So, um, okay, so uh, I need 10 months to be able to take my A1 English to a B2 C1 level um, and I can, uh, I can, I can use uh, six hours a day to, to improve it. Um, my okay, two questions in Russian and he read them in English and answer in English. Really? You can speak Russian, then you will say it in English? Russian is my first language. I've got German to a B2 level. Um, 
and they want to know basically a plan and materials to be able to improve their English. I'm going to put this over to Ollie because this is a, an Ollie question for sure after your British Council work, isn't it, Ollie? Apply? I think you've got to go to our... Closure, closure. Uh, some of the basic materials. Which is a totally different question. Wow. One suggestion I might have if you want to pursue this is perhaps go to the, uh, the the polyglots group on Facebook. So if you go to search for the polyglots group, it has a lot of members in. You could ask that question, and people will people who know what they're talking yeah, yeah. about will will definitely wade in and, and give you some some tips on that. So the last question we got is: At what point do you consider yourself fluent with a language? Um, and in respect to every language that we know as well. And then. There's a few different parts to this question, um, some of which we've answered. So maybe that would be a good, a good place to finish, actually, then, Richard. At what point do we consider ourselves fluent with the language? Never. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, th th I guess behind this question is that, you know, I say I speak however many languages. You say I speak however many. What does that actually mean, really? I guess that's just that's probably what they're asking. So for me personally, I, 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 don't, I, I try and avoid the term fluent, fluently, uh, like the play, um, simply because what one person thinks is fluent, another person doesn't. Um, and so I tend to just let uh, the listener decide what they want to, to think uh, and how well I think I speak the language. I they are full of bullshit. They are not fluent in anything. They are full of bullshit. They are not fluent in anything, only in English. They are only fluent in English. All this bullshit scammers. I learn it for when I'm happy that I've met my goals with the language, and that's when I'm happy. So, for for one language, it could be a holiday language uh, where I need to get by, and I may have a good understanding of a language, like say Polish or something like that, because I speak other similar languages better. Um, for other languages, it just may stay at that basic level, like Hebrew. Um, and I don't really stress it too much, uh, as long as I've met the goals that I set for myself. I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say the same thing. I mean, obviously, with all my languages, I had they all at all at different levels. Some of them are very, some of them are very strong. Some of them are quite weak. Again, I think this is kind of a label, the kind of label of of, uh, of, of fluent or fluency that people like to use. But um, it's almost a kind of arbitrary goal or an arbitrary um, label, which doesn't really have that much meaning in real life. I mean. However good my Portuguese may be, for example, there are people who live in Brazil or Portugal or even the UK who speak far better Portuguese than me. So what does it even mean? Um, the main thing for me, like just like what Richard said, is what's my goal? And um, so, you know, I, I was in Egypt last year for a while. I spent eight, about eight months in Egypt and I was learning Arabic. Am I fluent in Arabic? No way. But can I use Arabic for daily conversation and to get around Egypt, yeah. No, you cannot. You cannot use your basic Arabic to get around in Egypt. Maybe you can just go to the store and, and ask, can I buy this food or this thing? How much does it cost? Okay, here, how much? Like that. And still you will pronounce it wrong and say it wrong. Or you can go to the coffee shop and say, I want a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Maybe just something like this. And still, they will not 100% understand you. Your Arabic Egyptian, I have watched it. I have watched your Arabic Egyptian videos. And your level is very, 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 very low. Your level in Arabic Egyptian is very low. It's really, really low. Your pronunciation is wrong and you say some word wrong and you just know few things only, just few stuff that you have learned or memorized. You cannot speak Egyptian Arabic. You're still very low, just only you know very few things. Oli Richard in Cairo, together with this channel, Jan and Lucas. So let's see if he can speak Arabic how good and if he go to some store if he can speak or if they will understand him. Well, 
English as your native language. I really appreciate foreigners. They really, they really like it when, um, they really like it when foreigners come to Egypt and live here. They appreciate the. Isn't there French, Spanish, Portuguese, Japanese, Italian? Well, English as your native language. Um, Arabic. Am I, am I missing a uh, language? Yeah, uh, Cantonese. Uh, Cantonese and. <laughs> All the language just beginner. All the language beginner. All these polyglots, all these polyglot YouTuber, they are beginner in all the language. Are you learning Arabic here? Yeah, Egyptian Arabic, yeah. Um, that must yeah. be very easy for you to, to learn all these languages. One thing I've learned is I know what works for me now. Um, so that brings confidence. Only he go inside the store, then he just tell them like, I want one of this or two of this, and then like that. He only say two or three things, and then they could not even totally understand him. But I removed the sound because there was some music. That's why I removed the sound. But he only say like, you can watch the video by yourself if you go and search this video, but. He only say like something like, oh, I want one of this or two of this like that. And that's the only thing he can do in Arabic. He can just say, I want one of this or I want two of this like that. And then same time, he cannot pronounce it correctly. So that's how he think he can, he is fluent in Arabic or he can speak Arabic now. Like it's just a joke. All those polyglot YouTubers. They just practice few things, and memorize few things, same like Lavusho, same like Lavusho, they just practice few sentences and memorize few sentences, that's all what they can do. Just they go to the to, to the store and ask how much is it, and I want how many, I want one of these or two of these, that's all what they can do. And still they will pronounce it wrong and say it wrong, like it will not be totally correct. So he's not really fluent in Arabic or Egyptian. He's not even high level. He's just beginner or no few sentence. They're just bullshit, all of these polyglot YouTubers. All of them just bullshit, pretending that they know much more than they do. They will pretend that they are fluent or almost fluent, but they can only say few things. All of you polyglots, all of you polyglot YouTuber, all of you, will make it look like you know things 10 times or 100 times more than you do. Like if you're still very, very beginner at a language, you will make it look like you are very good or you're fluent. Like if you're really, really bad at a language and you only know a few words or a few sentences, then in your videos you will make it look like or you will say that, oh, I'm high level or I'm very high level or I'm fluent. 
you will always make it look like you are a hundred times better than you are in every language you are full of bullshit all of you you are only fluent in English same like Richard Simcott only Richards and Richard Simcott you are only fluent in English you are only fluent in one language that is English and both of you are from UK both of you are from UK and only fluent in English so what like I don't know what we could put a label on that but again what's I don't I, I, for me it doesn't really mean anything it's such a personal thing that um, that it's very very difficult to kind of to, to label to label that um, but uh, I mean I think Richard says something often that, that, I, that I really that I think is very useful to think about which is that you can be fluent at all different levels of learning a language um, and that Fluent at different levels. <laughs> fluent at different levels. There are the fluent for normal people. There are the fluent for normal people where normal people can have longer conversation and understand almost everything in the language and be very high level in the language. That's the fluent of most people for most normal people. And there is the other fluent. There's another fluent for the abnormal people. There's another fluent for the abnormal people, the polyglot YouTubers. There's another fluent for the polyglot YouTubers where they can only memorize few sentences or say few words or learn few words or few sentences and after they will say I'm fluent. There's this fluent fluency of polyglot YouTubers, the fluency of polyglot YouTubers is memorizing few words and few sentences and learn few words and few sentences in many language and after they will say I'm fluent in 10 language or I'm fluent in 20 language I'm fluent in 30 language I'm fluent in 50 language I'm fluent in 65 language I'm fluent in 100 language that's the fluency of polyglot youtubers that's the fluency of polyglot youtubers you are all full of bullshit if you even if you just like me just been learning German for a few weeks for a few weeks, for a few weeks, for a few weeks, he's learning German. Now he's fluent. Maybe he or almost. <laughs> I can I can see a situation in which I can have a perfectly good conversation in German. Like if I arrive at. <laughs> After a few weeks of German, he think that he is almost fluent. They're all bullshit. They're all full of bullshit. All these polyglot YouTubers, they're full of lies. They lie so much, they're full of bullshit. The, the main train station in Germany, I ask, you know, how do I get to such and such a place? I hear and understand the... Such a such a place. He's from UK and he cannot even speak English. Like your own language, you cannot speak it. Like such a such a such a place. How to go to such a such a such a place. You cannot even speak your own language, English, and then you want to say that you're fluent in eight language or ten language or how many language. You cannot even speak English, correct? And you're from UK. Reply, and I say, and I confirm that, and I say thank you. We've had a great conversation. Um, wow, very great conversation. He can ask like, how to t take the train to this place. That's a conversation. He could write that. He could write that down on google translate how to go to berlin station how to go to berlin station you can write it on google translate or something and then listen how to say it or look how to say it then he can ask someone what he read from the google translate then now you are, you make a good conversation because you ask him how to go to berlin station or how to go to this station in german you're full of bullshit, all of you right at the beginning kind of level you can have very successful interactions Lovely. and really use the language for something positive so that then carries on all the way to c2 level and beyond so yeah exactly what you start to label things it, i don't know exactly it's being fluent in what you know is is the thing so whatever level you're at being fluent at that level and i think that's our hour our yeah. So, well, it's um, it's been great fun answering all these questions. Some really fantastic questions from everybody. Yeah. Um, thank you for listening. Maybe we'll um, we'll just 
tell you once more where you can find us in case you want to uh, get in touch with us. Um, we're both we both love to hear from from people and to get to get emails and messages and things. So, Rich, where can people find you? So you can find me um, most easily on Speaking Fluently. So Facebook dot com forward slash Speaking Fluently. Uh, they can find you on Speaking Fluently, but you cannot speak fluently. Only English. Only you can speak fluently English. Or on speakingfluently.com, and um, all links go from there, I think. Yeah, so for me, definitely check out the podcast. I will teach you a language podcast, and you can find me on the blog as well. You will teach us a language? You will teach us a language? Can you teach me Egyptian Arabic? <laughs> Can you teach me Egyptian Arabic? Yeah. <laughs> teach a language. Teach a language. <laughs> I will teach you a language.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he will teach us a language. The only language you're fluent in is English. The only language you're fluent in is English. Even if you can speak some Portuguese or some French or Spanish or Italian, why should people go to you and learn from you when there are some other people who are native speakers of Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, French or German. Why should they go to you and learn from you when you're not native speaker, you're not high level, you're just beginner or something like that, then they should go and learn from you. Like what the fuck is this kind of jokes? And also on social media, just search for me and you'll find it. You'll find me there. Cool. So thanks very much, guys. It's been a thanks great so pleasure. Much. And um, we'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. This was funny. This was funny. This italki is also bullshit. This italki, they make money. They always make interview with all the polyglots. They make money from this italki. That's why they do this. They are bullshit, this italki. They make money from doing this. Here, look. They have many videos with many different people. Look here, they have... Look, italki here, they have video with... Richard Simcott and also Steve Kaufman and also discovered the Polyglot Conference. They have many Polyglot YouTubers here in their videos. Look here again, I talk interview Polyglot Richard Simcott in five language. Here also, I talk a webcast with Richard Simcott and Oli Richards, the one that I just showed you now. This I talk, you cannot trust them. They also make money from this. Like they will make money from this kind of people when they show that look look we have some people who can speak many language that will make them make money also it's all big scam all this bullshitting people he can speak english because he's from uk and then all the other language just beginner And then he just keeps showing us his progress in every language. Like what is it? What is so special? What is so special about someone who can speak one language, English, and then he try to learn like 10 or 20 different language and just beginner or something in every language. Like I cannot see what is special about being fluent in one language and then beginner in 10 or 20 language 
like what is so special that you can speak one language fluently and then 10 or 20 language your beginner like I don't know what is so special about that like what is so special about being fluent in one language and then 10 or 20 language your beginner fluent in one language and then 10 or 20 or 30 language you're just beginner or no no few stuff and just trying to learn a little like why should I care about that why should anyone really care about someone who is fluent in one language and then beginner in 10 or 20 language fluent in one language and then beginner in 10 or 20 language and look look this look he will sell some books these short stories he will sell some books learning language even he cannot speak all this language like look english spanish dutch italian french german english norwegian okay i can also speak norwegian Russian, Swedish, really? I'm sure he just makes some people make these books for him. I'm sure some people they make these books for him or he gets some help or like that. It's just bullshit, all these people. I will teach you a language, really? He cannot speak all this language, then he will sell some books. All these polyglot YouTubers, they're big scammers. Look, he have, has teamed up with publishing guy and teach yourself. All the scammers working together, like it's a big scam. Like if they can make money, if those kind of people can make money, then they will stand beside of the scammers. Like if this publisher think, oh, this book will make some money, then they will do it. Even if they know he cannot speak the language, they're just scammers, all of them. All about making money, just big scammers. Seven new language just released. Oh, now Danish also? Now also Danish. I did not see any video where he speak Danish. I did not see any video where he speak Danish or Dutch or Norwegian or Turkish. Italian, I did not see him speak all this language. I did not see him speak Italian or Turkish or Dutch or Danish in his videos. Like, what the hell, man? It's all big scam, all these polyglot YouTubers. French, German, big, big scam, man. Look how many language. French, Italian, English, German, Russian. I did not see him speak Russian and German, Brazilian, Danish, Dutch, what the hell man, Norwegian, Swedish, Turkish, he cannot even speak all this language, Arabic, English, Italian, Korean, Korean also, Icelandic, oh my god, he can speak all the language in the world now, or what, oh my god, it's like a big scam, man, It's like big scam, like there are some people working for each other, they're helping each other. Maybe some other people write the one in different language. Some other people write them, but because he is famous person, then they will use his name. He's the famous person, they will use his name, and but some other people will be the one who write it. It will be other people who write in different language. But they use his name to publish it because he's famous. It's like a big, big scam. A big, big scam.
also he has some language course he has some language course also what the hell man Shot sim cut sell a book they're all scammers all these polyglot youtubers they're scammers